Yeah, when you're ready. The launch of the Brexit Party is terrible news for UKIP, isn't it? Well, I think it's a distraction we could do without. Um, UKIP is the authentic party of Brexit. We've been campaigning for Britain to leave the European Union ever since we were first formed in 1993. Uh, so we'd like sorry. a clear run. I'm very sorry, I'm not to pause you there. For some reason, I'm not going to audio anymore. Um, I've got it in the pocket. Yeah, can I have a look at it? Sorry, I was getting it a second ago. I don't know what's happening. Are you getting it? Yeah, yours is fine. Um. Can you just say anything? We'll just test. Uh, okay, can you hear me? I'm Gerard Batten. Oh, that's better. Mem Sorry. Uh, member of the European Parliament for London, UKIP leader. Sorry about that, Romilly. Um, ready to go when you are. Okay. okay. Is that all right then? Yep. Nigel Farage has launched today the Brexit Party. It's really bad news for UKIP, isn't it? Um, well, it's something we could do without. It's a distraction as far as I'm concerned. UKIP is the authentic party of Brexit. It's been fighting to leave the European Union since we were formed in 1993. We'd like a clear run in these elections, but politics is a free market. You can't stop people coming into the market. The voters have to make their choice. But UKIP's pretty invisible without Nigel Farage. He was your only public figure, really, the most recognisable face, the biggest campaigner. Well, what I'd, are you without him? I'd be quite visible um, as leader, and you're talking to me today, Romney, so you know, I'll be visible on, on your channel. Um, there is, this is going to be another five weeks of this campaign. So you, the, First of all, UKIP was uh, raised enough money to send a leaflet to every one of the 27 million households in this country, so they'll be getting our message via the Royal Mail. I'm sure that I'll be doing lots of media during the campaign and we'll be promoting our message of unilateral, unconditional withdrawal from the European Union. Uh, no ifs and buts, a very clear message. Um, and we will campaign on that. But that's a message that the Brexit Party will be espousing too. The vote is going to be split, isn't it? Is it? Is it really? I don't know. I'm not sure about that. In the European Parliament this week, on Wednesday, there was a meeting of the Conference of Presidents, the different political groups, and I've been informed today that President Tajani, the President of the, of, the, of the Parliament, went round the heads of groups asking them if they favoured an extension to Brexit or not. And I am told that Nigel Farage said he favoured an extension to Brexit, whereas my representative there, Stuart Agnew of Saucy, said that UKIP did not favour an extension to Brexit. So we are the ones that are standing unequivocally for exit from the EU, but I'm not so sure about where Mr Farage stands on it. So what are you suggesting his motivation is there? Well, I think that the Brexit Party is a Tory front organisation. It's a safe safety valve for the Tory party. It hasn't got any policies. It isn't even the real party. It doesn't have members. It has subscribers or supporters who pay money. Uh, it doesn't have policies or a manifesto. UKIP is a real party with a manifesto, real members who've got to vote. Uh, and we have a domestic agenda, which the Brexit Party doesn't. But it has Nigel Farage and he's stealing all your thunder at the moment. Well, he isn't stealing my thunder. I, if you look at social media, we're getting tremendous support from social media. And he's not doing so well. Uh, it depends where you look, of course. But politics is a fight. It's a battle. We'll be fighting to win. We'll be fighting with everything that we've got over the next few weeks. Our MEPs will not be celebrities who are going to parade on a platform in Brussels. They will be people who selected because they are 100% for leaving the European Union and they will campaign for a real exit from the European Union, for a real Brexit. Maj Farage says you've tarnished the UKIP brand and uh, taken it to the far right. Uh, well, that is a slur. He's known me for about 27 years. He knows the kind of person I am. That is just a, a complete <coughs> slur against me and against the party. And if you actually took, looked at what I've done with the party over the last 12 months. I've taken it up from uh, the point of near collapse, financial and political. We're now very sound financially. We've just raised half a million pounds to pay for leaflets, for example, and the money's still coming in. Uh, and uh, membership has gone up from a low point of 17,000 up to now, it's up to 29, heading for 30,000. So I've actually done a very good job. And I wouldn't be able to do that if people believed the lies and the slurs of the mainstream media and people like Mr Farage. Well, you say it's a slur, but you've taken on Tommy Robinson as an advisor. What does someone with extreme far-right views well, and got, multiple criminal convictions bring to your party? He hasn't got, he, sorry, he hasn't got far-right views. That is just simply not true. And there are convicted... This is somebody who's been banned are, from every social media platform for his views. No, they're banning lots of other people whose views they don't like as well and deplatforming them, demonetising them. 
Um, only certain points of view are now allowed now in our politically correct world. Um, but there are people in the House of Commons, There's one isn't there, one notable case of a convicted criminal who's tagged, who's voting on the Brexit process. You've got four members of the House of Lords with criminal convictions. So where would you say Tommy one Robinson's of them views of lie? One of whom is now on serious grooming charges. Where, where would you say his views lie? In well, first of all, he isn't a member of UKIP. Secondly, I took advisor. him on just as an advisor. I've got lots of people advising me in different areas. Um, I do not believe that he is far right. I believe he has views which he is entitled to express. And I did, have never said I agreed with all of his views. I'm sure he doesn't agree with all of mine. So which views do you not agree with? Well, I don't know all his views. We'd have to sit in a room and spend a day going through all of them, wouldn't we? I don't have a problem with some of the things that he says. I don't endorse everything that he says. Will he be standing for you for the European election? He can't because he's not a member of the party, so that was never going to happen. I've explained that to him. If he wants a career in politics and if he wants to join UKIP, that is something that will have to happen after the next leadership elections, which will probably take place now after the European elections, and that will be subject to a vote of all the members, every UKIP member, because we're a democratic party, all the members have a vote, and I would not, even if I wanted to, try to bring him in without a, the endorsement and a vote of the members, because it's their party, their decision. That's another big difference between us and the Brexit party. So my question was, what do you think he brings to the party? Well, he isn't in the party. He is He's going. He was. He would try to advise me on certain things like the grooming scandal that's gone on in the country. And one of the things he wanted to concentrate on, but has been prevented from doing that by the latest problems that he has in his life, is to concentrate not so much on what happened and who was responsible, but who covered it up. The police, the local authorities, the social services and the councils. How did it get to the stage that it did over the last 30 years? Because those people were colluding to actually cover and it up. And you see him as an, expert, as an expert in this? He knows quite a lot about it. And he knows quite a lot about prison conditions, having spent a bit of time there. For on fraud? On for, false for, charges. What, for fraud? Uh, uh, for violence? For assault? He didn't necessarily go to prison for all of those charges. Where he, he's been in there recently, for, for, for where he's been in there recently, he numerous where he's been in there recently is because he was on a trumped up uh, uh, charge from the court on, um, uh, sorry, I can't forget. It was a trumped up charge on abuse contempt of the court. Of court. Contempt of court, I'm sorry. He was on a, a, what I would regard as a falsified charge of uh, contempt of court. The court actually had freed him. And now he finds he's on yet another charge to do with that, when in actual fact what the Attorney General should have done was said there was no case to answer uh, and actually closed the book on him. But they're not because they're trying to draw, destroy him as a human being. And you turned, a, you turned a blind eye to the convictions for fraud and for violence no, and for assault? No, I don't. Some of those convictions he will freely admit to. Others, he says, are dubious. And he explains all this in the book that he's written, Enemy of the State. Um, you know, I accept that some people do commit crimes and they're sorry for them afterwards and they're reformed characters. Sometimes they say that the charges were false charges. Uh, he's, uh, uh, he has admitted to some and said that others were false charges. So, you know, that's, that's uh, something I can take a view on. I don't have detailed knowledge of every one. But there are many people in public life who have had previous criminal convictions who then reform and play a useful part in society. So, sorry, I mean, is this an interview about the yeah, elections or is it about, about Tommy Robinson? Robinson? It's about Tommy Robinson, isn't it? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. if that's so what you want to talk about, I mean, what, no, what you're going to do now is you've asked me about the European elections, no. you've focused on Tommy Robinson, you will, print, you will only show a couple of minutes of this no. and you will take the Tommy Robinson stuff. No, no, I'm, I'm actually doing the European elections, we're interviewing so Labour. So, why are we talking about Tommy Robinson? It's nothing because to do with well, the European elections. Well, it's because it is a big part of why people have left UKIP. People like Nigel Farage say they yeah. can no. N Nigel Farage support, left UKIP back in 2016 when he effectively Because of your courting of the far right. Nigel Farage wanted UKIP to collapse in 2016. It didn't. He walked away. He didn't want anything more to do with it. Uh, he could have run for leadership again when Henry Bolton ran. He could have run for leadership again when I ran. And he could, if he wanted to, probably be leading the UKIP now into the European elections. He doesn't want to do that because he doesn't want a proper functioning democratic party. He wants a dictatorship where he calls all the shots. And that's what he's got in the Brexit party. And that's where I close the interview. Thank okay, can, can we just get the two shots which we need to set you up for the yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you will only use the bits about Tommy Robinson. Yeah, well, it's not about Tommy Robinson. It's not about Tommy Robinson. Well, well it sounded but like if, it. I mean, if you, if you don't want questions about Tommy Robinson, you shouldn't take him on as an well, advisor. I I mean, nothing but. On. I mean, I, everything I've said, you could look at anything I've said about it. It's farcical. You, but you all ask me, you all ask me well, the same do questions over and over again. Well, why did, is it on every, every TV programme or every radio programme, you ask me the what same questions? 
well, how many answers to the same answers do you need to the well, same why questions? Do you why do you need the same answer to the same questions over and over again? You before, so I don't know why uh, you don't I've have Tommy Robinson on. Why don't you have Tommy Robinson? Because we wouldn't give him a platform. Then why keep asking me about him? Why do you think? Because, because I, I never figure. volunteer anything about him. I have never gone to TV or so radio and said I want to talk about him. Right. I get asked but about him. But you take him on as an advisor, so of yes, course you get so, asked about so him. So Jeremy Corbyn talks to Hannah and Hannah's the IRA. Two seconds. Can I get Romilly talking for ten seconds, please? So this is just to set you up and to introduce you into the piece. So I tell you what we're doing with this. The first day of the um, European elections, so we are looking at how well Labour will do, we're looking at the setting up of the Brexit party, we're looking at uh, whether votes will go high off from the Tories to, to UK board of the Brexit party. Needed non -sync. And whether... Um, for a question? No, no, that's absolutely fine. No, so as long as you've got uh, us so both in setup, that's um, fine. Any reverses? No, that's great. Fine. Thank you. We're done. Right. Okay. Thank you. You'll have to bear with me. I just need to send this over. Yeah, yeah, you can. Don't no worry. Five, ten minutes. So it honestly is a piece about the European election. Well, I'm We've surprised. Got about I've, been, seven. I've, I've just had this happen the, often. The, the, the fundamental point is, look, Tommy Robinson is not a candidate. He's not going to be a factor in the European but election. But you've got Farage today saying that yeah. UKIP has yeah, become a far-right yeah. party. So it is part of... And, I'm afraid yeah. it's part of the story. Yeah, yeah. but he's lying. So, you know, and we, and look, it's, I'll tell you what's going to be interesting. We are going to be running a candidate in the South East uh, who is a former uh, personal assistant to Nigel Farage for the past three years. She knows a lot about what went on in there, and we will be promoting her as well. So I would like to set up some interviews going forward with her. Mm -hmm. so there will be some very interesting ITV stuff London. on that um, uh, that you'll find. But, uh, um, I mean, not London, ITV News. Um, we, you know, we're just we're sick of answering the same questions at this point. One, it's three, just, and he hasn't been able to tell me very much, because his um, life has been under such threat. His life is under threat. His wife is threatened with rape. His children are threatened. He can't find somewhere to live because the police will not yes, protect exactly. him in his own house. Mm -hmm. And that's the pressure so that he lives under. Just because we the time, I thought I'd just... Yeah, so he hasn't actually been able to provide me with a lot of uh, the information I would have liked to have got because his life has been consumed with this. And most people would have collapsed no, under that kind of pressure. Why is this you? You've got to tell you why. Because he's a brave and heroic man who stands up for what's gone wrong in this country, to protect the victims of what's gone. And he isn't far right, and I wouldn't have anything to do with anybody that's far right. I've been part of a democratic... The EDLE right, left then I'm because it was infiltrated I'm, I'm by elements of the far right, and probably by the security like services who use these people to destabilise organisations that they don't like. You know that. You're intelligent enough to know that's what happens. He's, this set up as a spontaneous movement in Luton, when troops who were coming back from the Iraq war were insulted on the streets and, and demonstrated against. That was a reaction I'm against thanks. that and the drug dealing and the enforced I'm prostitution thinking. and the grooming that goes on in places like Luton. It, came, it started up spontaneously. It's then infiltrated because the people who ran it didn't really understand how to organise something like that. And indeed it's very difficult. We know how we've been trying to be infiltrated over the years. When it got to that state, he left. Now, you may not like him, you may not agree with him, but he isn't far right, and I'm not far right. And it's a cheap smear that why can't we just talk about politics? And if you want to talk about far right, ask Nigel Farage why he's employed a former member of the National Front for years down in his office. Yeah, I've never employed anybody from the BNP or the National oh, Front. Yeah. Um, UKIP is the only party. It's a chap called Martin Hewitt. 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 Martin with a Y who I've got nothing against because he says oh, 30 years ago or something he joined an organisation, then he regrets yeah. it. Okay, he's another yeah, reformed yeah. character. But it's a bit um, rich for Farage to attack me. Yeah. He's well, a hypocrite, I'm sure you're aware of that in many ways. Well, more than I, one. I, he's a politician, oh, isn't he, first wow. and foremost. He says oh, whatever wow. he thinks is going to help his cause. Um, which I don't, I say what I believe. Amazing. Thank you so much. That's definitely said today. Okay, so has that gone back? Um, it will be very soon. I'll just text I mean, that one. It's coming. Yeah, sorry. Um, Catherine's running down my line. Catherine knows? No, she doesn't. Okay, I'll uh, she's trying to get through to me. I could tell you things, but I can't because I'm not at liberty to do it. And it makes me sick when he stands up there and tries to smear me. And the things I could tell you, I, I was at liberty to tell you. From ITV News, I've managed. Can you hear me? Believe me. But it doesn't do your cause um, any good. The my of, knows, sorry, the, um, that side of politics is now split between well, two separate parties. Yeah, but he didn't that want to run. Exactly my opinion was that back in 2016 when he went away and then Bolton came um, on, but he wanted you to collapse. I've told these 
happy to create. Right. So he'll yeah. tell you it's true. Yeah. I said yeah. my view was his longer term strategy was he thought there was an outside chance that there'd be European elections yeah. uh, and that Brexit wasn't going to happen because we all knew it was going to be betrayed. You don't need to be a prophet to see that. He knew it was going to be betrayed, so he thought there was an outside chance that there will be European elections, and therefore, well, he didn't want to run with UKIP because it's got the inconvenience of a national executive committee and members who vote, and that doesn't want that kind of thing. He's always stated he would like to be one man. Mm. He admires Gert Builders because he doesn't have members, he just has subscribers. Um, so well, my view is that he deliberately didn't do anything to try and help save you. He was perfectly happy for it to disappear down the toilet pan back in last February because then if there was a European election, as there are going to be, the great Nigel could step into the limelight and say, I'm going to start a new party and we won't have all this inconvenience of democracy and yeah. NECs and members and I'll say exactly what's going to happen and who the candidates are going to be. And that's what you've got. Unfortunately, we didn't die from his point of view and we're still there and we're going to fight too for now for this because what he's going to end up with if we go back is a bunch of time-serving opportunist pocket fillers. He's already got a few of those lined up, but he selected in the last um, run. I, I had nothing to do with the selection of the candidates five years ago, and you can get the measure of them by seeing what they do. They spend five days a week there shoveling the 320 tax-free euros into their pockets. Well, exactly. I mean, but that's the big irony of all this, is what is the point of having, of sending well, when we did it, fundamentally disagree with the whole European because project. To, it's to, very simple to because it's proportional representation, and we can win. If we had proportional representation in Westminster, you'd have had UKIP MPs years ago, but we don't. No, but but what what is the point of sending people who don't believe in that project? Well, there? Because see, actually, important legislation is 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 worked out there, and if 24 of the MP, MEPs don't even turn up. Well, they do turn up. They turn up for the plenary UK sessions. UKIP has had a terrible. No, 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 no. Well, they turn up for the plenary sessions when we vote on the legislation. Now, what you've got to remember is when you see the these figures. Well, when you, when you see the figures on uh, old people with 75% attendance, no, what they're, what they're actually, the only thing that they can measure is the roll call votes during the plenary sessions. A lot of that voting is frankly on what's called own initiative reports, which are not legislative. And quite frankly, I've got up sometimes and gone back up to the office to do something useful like reply to emails from constituents, because there is no point in voting on a hot air report from some MEP on shouldn't we have a uniform size for garden chairs, you know? I've got better things to do. But the legislative stuff we do conscientiously vote on as much as possible. I've missed a few sessions because I've been ill. You know, I had a, an operation that made me miss two sessions. But by and large, we turn up and we vote on the legislation. But we're not there to make it a talking shop work. Uh, and as I said, you can t it's the only job in the world where they tur you get paid for turning up. You get a massive salary, plus you get 320 euros a day tax-free just for turning up. And you don't have to do anything. You'd like a job like that, wouldn't you? Not exactly, would. Well, there you are, you see. In the first term, we had people elected like me, uh, Graham Booth, who's now dead. Um, I can't think of his name. We had various, and Godfrey Blooms, and I, where people who were long-time UKIP activists who didn't, you know, we, had, we didn't necessarily need the income. I mean, I was, I was, uh, I was on five years. I paid leave for my job for the first five years. I could have gone back any time I liked. And what you had subsequently is opportunists who have gone in because they thought, oh, it's a great place to make a living. And what we had in the second term and the, and the last term were people who couldn't make it in the Tory party. You look at the number of failed Tories yeah, that we yeah, had. Absolutely. And they were recruited by Nigel in a pub. Mm. That's his normal modus operandi. Mm. So if, because he is basically a Tory. He's a Tory that is in exile. This is what I've said about you. For a long time, it was dominated by people who treated UKIP as a refugee camp for Tories in exile. I'm trying to change that. And what you will see, uh, I think in this election, is we're going to get massive more support in the north of England. And there's a lot of people up there who understand what people like Tommy Robinson are talking about, and they want to vote for something different. Where Farage will concentrate, in my opinion, is down in the south, mm -hmm. where you can get the old Tory. Yep. So, uh, it and will be fascinating. Well, Tom, is that sent? It's sending. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Hello, press office. The Tories will be wiped out. Well, they deserve it. That doesn't. You see, I'm not a Tory. It doesn't bother me. I don't want Corbyn. I don't want a Marxist government. But on the other hand, do I want the Tories? No, not really. And they're both going in the same direction anyway, which is they they, they want to have full integration with the European Union. I don't understand why Corbyn does, because that's the only thing that me and him had in common for four years was opposition to the EU. 
Unless it's a... Well, he doesn't want that, but uh, the rest of his party does. Unless it's a skillful Marxist, Marxist Leninist ploy, and if he gets in government, he'll say, oh, do you know all these things we wanted to do, like renationalise, etc., we can't do them because EU directives prevent us, so it would be ironic, wouldn't it? Yeah. Anyway, they've got Rhys Mogg's sister. I know, that's well, that's... Um, that will send out a clear message to a lot of uh, people, won't it? Candidate. <laughs> Thank you. you won't have any 